सेकेंड बैक टू एयरफोन सोच की टी टॉक ट्रेन ऑफ थॉट्स विद सीरीज ऑफ एन एपिसोड विद डॉक्टर भरत कुलकर ने हुज बेसिकली कोर एरिया इज इन टू एन एग्री बिजनेस हिज मेजर एक्सपोजर इज देयर एज फॉर द ईस्टर्न साउदर्न अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज विच आर कंसर्न इन टर्म्स ऑफ एन मेकिंग एन एग्री एग्रीकल्चर पॉलिसीज विच आर विच आर देयर सर वेलकम बैक टू एन अदर एपिसोड नाउ if we we'll see the challenges uh, uh, which are which are there like the poor and the remote farmers who are there we talk in terms of and there is a district level uh, farmer challenges bank official challenges which are there and the government body challenges which are there now how to overcome this kind of and challenges now one part we talk in terms of an economic security through credit flow how we can uh, get uh, uh, in, in in a proper uh, way like Uh, see economic security through credit flow one of the major thing is uh, we had this uh, prim- uh, primary sector lending concept in india uh, where, where the banks were forced to lend to the uh, commercial sector mm-hmm. or to the to the uh, um, uh, agriculture sector mm-hmm. now what the banks would do banks would go to uh, say big traders and they would say uh, we will lend you Hmm. so in spite of uh, having that policy in place uh, we were not able to achieve the penetration of credit to the farmer as we should be hmm. and the simple is if you ask uh, my father was a banker and if you ask any banker he would tell you that uh, the reason why it has not happened is the credit risk is an uh, person based risk in in that matter hmm. so uh, the credibility of the farmer as a borrower hmm. do not qualify for the banks to uh, lend to him and we are not over these uh, years we have not been able to create the credibility of the farmer in terms of uh, credit flow there have been initiatives like the kisan credit card and uh, uh, those initiatives which have led the the credit uh, to be created the farmer but when you grossly or when you on, on a gross level if you look at it we still do not have a business model where banks would say okay i am going to use this business model to lend more money to the farmers mm-hmm. and that is where we need to convert the uh, the the credibility of the farmer uh, from individual credibility to the product credibility mm-hmm. if we are able to create the platform where his product becomes a collateral mm-hmm. then the financing can be much easier because then the bank has a certain collateral which it can uh, actually uh, lend against mm-hmm. and that is what uh, is called a structured finance mm-hmm. so uh, uh, say if you have a structured market you have a structure you you have uh, then then it brings in um, uh, the storage solutions it brings in everything falls in place mm-hmm. so uh, to that uh, structure if we if we if we work on and if we try to bring in uh, converting the, uh, the the credibility of the product as the lendable uh, or or the base for lending then the banks can actually get into some work has been done on that uh, through the warehouse receipt uh, uh, say negotiable warehouse receipt uh, uh, introduction under the um, uh, the warehouse receipt act in india the the, the wdra uh, but still uh, we need to we, 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 need, we need to still take the financial institutions on on board for this because but most of this uh, it also look in terms of uh, uh the bank branches in the rural area which are there like you know 10 villages uh, they are having one bank like and maybe talk it up so there is a high transaction cost also so that can be one of the reason even for a bank uh, to uh, like you know uh, there was the a time business. there was a time when uh, banking was based on branches mm-hmm. and that is where the, uh, the 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 cost of establishing a branch cost of establishing uh, because you had human resource cost you had resources in terms of uh, say the building and a whole lot of cost was there so banks would evaluate very carefully because it directly impacted their uh, the their, their financial uh, performance with the advent of technology and with the advent of the fintech in last 10 years uh, we have come to a stage where actually a lot of uh, banking i have never visited a branch uh, my my branch for last 3 uh, 4 years mm-hmm. unless and until i have something very urgent and i need to meet the manager or some uh, technical uh, person in the branch i have to step into the branch otherwise mm-hmm. everything is is technology driven so that model can actually be replicated into the cooperative banking sectors mm-hmm. and the ba- uh, and, and the bank uh, and the rural banks which are there mm-hmm. and that would mean that the banks can actually create more reach 
rather than actually uh, uh, having physical physical physical, physical footprint foot, uh, footprint uh, one of the recent things that the government of india has done which is converting all the post offices uh, post office branches or banks into onto onto the co-banking platform would mean that we are adding uh, say close to a uh, hundred thousand uh, branches into the banking system mm -hmm. which is like adding four sbis into the system mm -hmm. if you actually look at from that perspective it's really huge okay. and that can actually be uh, if if um, if that can actually be leveraged to uh, say provide the financial services to the, to the farmers in the rural areas, probably the, the limitation and the uh, locational uh, challenges can actually be addressed. And also, I think in the process we see like there's an inadequate marketing facilities like you know to produce. How one can overcome that? Like, see that's what uh, in the earlier episode also we I spoke about uh, that uh, right now the farmer is left to the mercy of the trader because of the uh, uh, current marketing system. Mm -hmm. So the farmer is forced to sell it only to a uh, say at, at at a designated marketplace, a physical marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the technology, I think we really don't need physical marketplace. Mm -hmm. A farmer ca should be able to sell to anybody he desires to sell. Right. And that would create alternative marketing that would bring in more people into the marketing because it will open up the club. Okay. Right now what is happening is uh, if I want to get into uh, grain trading, uh, then I have to get a license from all the mandis to be uh, present in the mandis and do the procurement. Mm -hmm. Now if that limitation, I, if I look at that, the cost of my operation goes significantly high. And Dr. Bharat, also when we talk in terms of microfinance which are there, I think it should be extended uh, in the allied sector also. like. Uh, that's again one of the challenges. Right? Yes, and uh, that is where I think one of the interesting uh, drives in the last uh, uh, say 10 years has been the farmer producer organizations. Uh, the FPO which is a balance between the cooperative and the co corporate sector. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the features uh, of the corporate sector still uh, uh, say still retaining the essence of the cooperative sector. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, it's a wonderful experiment that we have done and FPOs are the organizations through which microfinance can actually be very easily promoted. Promoted. Nice. And that is where I think uh, NABARD and these agencies need to look at, work upon and uh, bring in more uh, solutions for improving microfinance uh, into that re into that sector. Mm -hmm. And even I think various of uh, multinational companies also uh, are in the process of uh, in terms of microfinance like you know, how they can reach to an uh, end, uh, uh, entrepreneur like to empower them like you know they also have you know, their initiative from their side like. Yes, if you actually see in last 5-7 years, 10 years in fact, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, say corporate backed NBFCs mm -hmm. that have actually come into uh, uh, picture, that have actually come into lending and uh, they have started uh, a lot of, uh, in, in a way, a revolution into uh, uh, agricultural lending. Mm -hmm. uh, the agriculture sector lending has improved in last 5-7 years uh, simply because of these uh, structures and that was because uh, a lot of work on the policy structure has been done. Mm -hmm. So that has, I think, uh, uh, a good potential. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing in more of uh, such initiatives would actually add to 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 more of to to improving the um, the, the the credit flow into the uh, rural areas. I see the uh, interesting conversation what we are having with Dr. Bharat Kulkarni in terms of uh, the challenges which are there, like reaching to the uh, poor and the remote farmers which are there. Here in this conversation, we have seen the challenges which are there, how to counter attack and overcome those kind of challenges. Uh, the insights were given by Dr. Uh, Bharat Kulkarni on this. And now I'm sure in the next episode, we are going to catch up with uh, Dr. Bharat Kulkarni in terms of understanding uh, the uh, value chain which is there and what are the challenges which lies in the entire uh, value chain. I'm sure it's an interesting insights to what we are getting as far as agri business which, uh, which are concerned. Stay tuned to T-Talk Ekman Sochki for next episode with Dr. Bharat Kulkarni on understanding more in depth about an agriculture sector. Till then, thank you much. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.